Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm here with my cat Leia, and I'm reviewing All the Rivers by Dorit Rabinian and translated by Jessica Cohen. I'm reviewing this for Women in Translation Month. Women in Translation Month was started in 2014 by a group of female translators and advocates who noticed a lack of ladies being translated and decided to do something about it. So here's my part in promoting them. I'll leave a link down to the Women in Translation website down below. All the Rivers uh, seems like a good fit for a translated novel discussion in a meta sort of way because it's a novel about two people from different cultures who meet elsewhere and uh, they have to speak English to one another because they don't know each other's native tongues. It's the turn of the millennium and Liat is a Israeli Fulbright scholar who meets up in New York with Hilmi, a Palestinian artist. The story is fiction, but it's also sort of translated from reality, based on Rabinian's own experiences living in New York around that time and starting a relationship with the Palestinian artist Hassan Harani. The book was published in 2014 in Israel with the title Gader Haya, and it won the country's Bernstein Prize. But then it attracted a controversy in 2015 when the Israeli Ministry of Education took it off of a high school curriculum. People tend to use the word banned with the story, which I feel is a little too intense and kind of speaks to the usual fraught nature of discussing anything having to do with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But it is true that the book was removed from the curriculum due to focuses on uh, intermarriage and assimilation and a portrayal of sadistic Israeli soldiers. And then after this event and the international media storm that followed, Rabinian was harassed in person and online by angry individuals who, of course, had a lot to say about the themes of her book, with, often without having read it. But she also found support among famous Israeli novelists like Amos Oz and David Grossman and A.B. Yehoshua. And, as is the case often with these sort of controversies, book sales soared. It's been since translated into several languages, and the English translation came out earlier this year. Rabinian changed the title in English, uh, Gader Haya literally means hedgerow. She chose all the rivers, and it is a line that is actually in the book, something that Hilmi says to Liat about how they are different rivers floating to the same place. And Rabinian opens, uh, at least the English translation of the book, with uh, this quote from Israeli poet Avot Yeshurun. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full, because all the rivers return to the rivers, believe me. It is the secret of tidal flows, it is the secret of wistfulness. So that kind of goes into one of the main themes about whether you can come together or whether you will ultimately stay apart. Another one has to do with seeing yourself in the other, and Rabinian gets into this a bit with allusions to reflections in mirrors and in water. I do think that the beginning and the end of Hilmi and Liat's relationship uh, is written a bit too schmaltzy. But the middle is filled with vignettes, like waves that come back and forth across the timeline as Liat and Hilmi uh, face these interesting parts of their relationship, confronting and arguing with each other about the conflict, finding uh, common ground as outsiders in New York, and then struggling with the fact that they have to pit their relationship together against all the other relationships in their lives. When Liat meets up with Israeli friends in New York, she tends to leave Hilmi behind, and when Hilmi's brother comes to visit, Liat and uh, the brother inevitably get into an argument about the conflict, which Hilmi sits out of rather than comes to uh, Liat's defense. This novel is very much told in hindsight, uh, although ironically it's uh, depicted in the present tense, but Liat is often very obviously looking back across time into this uh, short span from her life. Within the middle of the book, we are already starting to foreshadow into events that will come near the end uh, with very direct uh, promises. And since the novel is based on uh, real events from Rabinian's life, uh, if you research her, you could go into it very easily knowing the conclusion of the novel. It's one of those things that uh, tends to come off as too trite and convenient in uh, fiction until you realize that it's something that actually happened in reality. <laughs> but I won't spoil it any more than that. In general, I'm not sure what I think about these sorts of novels that are two steps removed from memoir. It seems to be an easy way to, for an author to get away with preaching about something. But in this book, I feel like uh, Liat's exploration comes off as very genuine 
and that I was never talked down to or given some sort of lecture on the merits of empathy. The journey just happened naturally, and oftentimes in small and nuanced ways. For example, in uh, one of the scenes that uh, features a controversial image of uh, Israeli soldiers, Hilmi recounts a time in his past when Israeli soldiers forced him to sing a Hebrew song with raunchy lyrics attached to uh, embarrass him. And Liat recognizes the tune and realizes that uh, they subtracted the real words for these fake words. And so she has these memories of listening to this nice innocuous song throughout uh, her life and now it's tainted and it has this new meaning that's attached to this relationship. Rabinian also accomplishes this with her beautiful physical descriptions and imagery. She can transport you immediately to the wintry streets of New York or the summer heat of Tel Aviv and Ramallah but I think she accomplishes it most poignantly uh, during a scene still taking place in New York when Liat is watching a homemade movie that another one of uh, Hilmi's brothers made. He's uh, standing on his balcony in Ramallah and looking over toward Tel Aviv, and so Liat gets to see her home from a different angle. She writes, How strange the reversal is, seeing us from the outside, looking in from the neighbor's window, seeing ourselves from the hidden side of the mirror to observe from here in New York what is visible to them in Ramallah, to stand in their place on the balcony like on Mount Nebo, and to see Israel every single day, to see the Tel Aviv suburbs and our lives that proceed on the other side, self-confident, unaware, as if we had no reflection. How peculiar and how frightening to discover how much they can see. The sun dives farther down, bleeding flames into the sea, Marwan's camera follows another flock of migrating birds on the edge of the sky, their dark thread tinged with the scarlet-purple glow of the sunset. But my eyes are fixed firmly on the bottom of the screen, scanning the outline of the increasingly gray rooftops in Tel Aviv. Because although Marwan's thoughts are with the expanse of sea and sky, only incidentally picking up the urban landscape that occasionally appears as he marvels at the birds, I cannot help but see us there. I cannot help but see Israel as it appears to its enemies. For as much as this is a novel about a relationship uh, between two people on different sides of a conflict, I think it's first and foremost a building's roman for Liat, as she struggles to see herself and her world from a larger perspective. And although there are references to the violent intifada that's plaguing Israel around this time, and concerns about getting on buses or being in public places for fear of bombs going off, Liat, through this relationship, gets to question her upbringing and the politics that surround her and the communal fears of her society. Rabinian expresses this so poignantly in the interview that she gave with uh, the Jewish Book Council, so I thought I'd read a snippet from there and link the interview down below. She says, I was trying to develop an idea to reflect something about the Israeli Jewish anxiety of being devoured by the neighboring identity, the one you mix with, the one that is so involved with your territory and is so symbiotic with your environment that you might lose your independent self and get mixed beyond recognition. And later, their relationship is more a reflection of the fact that these two young Middle Eastern lovers carry the conflict within themselves. It's not only part of their biography, it's also an element of their personality and their view of the world. It's who they are. They carry the conflict, the ambivalence, and the complexity of being an Israeli and a Palestinian. In New York, of course, Liat has no say in how she is perceived by others. And in this post-9-11 world as a dark-skinned woman, she and Hilmi are perceived quite in the same way as uh, potentially threatening. I think it's telling that Rabinian opens the novel when Liat gets a surprise visit from some police officers who got a report from someone who saw Liat writing in Hebrew on her laptop um, in a cafe, and this patron took it to be Arabic. Very indirectly, Rabinian probes uh, Liat's Mizrahi identity. She is a Jew of Middle Eastern descent. Her parents were uh, immigrants from Iran. A bit of a side note, if you are interested in uh, literature about uh, the Iranian Jewish experience, particularly around the time of the revolution, uh, I'll take this time to plug uh, The Septembers of Shiraz by Dahlia Sofer, and I'll link my review of that book down below. 
I also appreciate that in America, Liat and Hilmi get to go to a Nowruz celebration, a celebration of the Persian New Year, much to the bewilderment of Liat's parents. And speaking of another uh, theme of lost in translation, uh, Liat's parents tended to speak in Persian to one another when uh, they didn't want uh, Liat and her sister to understand what they were saying. But removed in America, Liat can understand different parts of herself and engage in a love affair that would have been impossible at home. At the end of the day, it's always easier to question things when you're at a remove from your ordinary life. It's easier to entertain uh, radical new paths in your life when you're far away from your family and the decisions that you made before. Still, these fleeting moments in life carry a lot of impact. Rabinyan dedicated this novel to Harani over a decade after their relationship had ended. And the final chapter in, in this novel uh, loops us back to Liat and Hilmi in New York uh, shortly before they both leave for the Middle East uh, when they realize that they never took a picture of each other together as a couple. And so they're attempting to do that and they ultimately fail. So in place of that, this story stands as testament to uh, their relationship and to the fact that something important in both of their lives has happened here. And despite the fact that it inevitably ends, it is something that they will always carry forward with them. I think that about covers what I want to say. I'd be interested in other people's thoughts and perceptions of this book, uh, given that I believe it's relatively popular due to the controversies in its past. <laughs> I hope you're all finding enjoyable things to read for Women in Translation Month, or we're finding anything enjoyable to read this month. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.